My name is Gina Mungo. I'm a real estate agent at Pyatt Sotheby's International Realty here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'm part of their architecture and historic homes division. A lot of my clients love the charm and character of older and historic homes, but are intimidated by the maintenance and restoration of these homes. A client of mine recently bought a home in the East Liberty neighborhood here in Pittsburgh that needed a lot of remodeling, maintenance, and restoration. As the former owner of a historic restoration company, I offered to teach her how to rechain her windows and do other projects around the house that she could learn to do herself. In this video, we're starting with the rechaining. If you follow along, you'll be able to rechain your own windows as well. And if you're ever interested in buying or selling an older or historic home here in Pittsburgh, give me a call. The reason why we have chains and windows is so that they can open their counterbalance. So in here, this part of the wall, called the court. You'll open that up shortly. We'll see what's inside. What we're hoping is in there are, is a weight on this side and a weight on that side. Together, those two weights will equal the weight of this very heavy window that obviously can't be moved up and down easily. When we replace the chain, the counterweights will balance it out. So we'll be able to open it and close it easily and it'll stay open when we want it to stay open. So what we need to do first is pop this guy. Uh, I usually like to look for an area where there's already maybe a little wiggle room and just get it in there. Mm -hmm. um, taking this out, uh, this is the trim, this is, helps keep the window in place. So when you pop this guy out, the window will be able to move freely in and out. So we'll get on both sides. Usually you like to try and do it right next to where you can see there's a little nail because when you do it right in the middle that's when it wants to break. You do want to be careful when you're taking this out because sometimes the window will just be very eager to pop out uh, so if you're usually you like to work with a partner so someone kind of spotting the window keep making sure it's in place. We're lucky here because this window has a little lock on top so it's locked in place so it's not going to fall on us. Uh, interior trim pieces out and now we're left with the sash. Uh, this part, which is commonly called just the window, in the terms that we're going to be using to avoid confusion, this is a sash. So sometimes you have a top sash and you have two double hung windows. In this case we just have the one bottom sash. Um, and it's not currently chained. The chains are maybe up in the little uh, pulleys. So at this point we can take the sash out uh, this is a two-person job because it is very heavy. So we took the sash out and you can see that there is this weather stripping here. Uh, this is a zinc weather stripping. There's a uh, V-shape right here that goes into a channel in the edge of the sash of the wood. Uh, they routed a little edging in there and that's supposed to pop in. This is fine if this is what you have and you're able to reuse it. I really like using spring bronze because uh, it puts pressure against the window at all times and forms like a lock there to really avoid any weather getting in. And this is usually, as you can see, a little janky. So we're going to take these out and replace it with the spring bronze. After all that's done, I like to go over the wood and see if there's any nails sticking out. And there are quite a few, so I'm going to remove those. Get them out of here. These are just little brads. And then we get to the fun part. This right here is called the port. This is a little secret compartment. You can see, and this is what contains the counterbalance weights. We're going to open this up and hope that there's a weight in there. So right now I'm taking out the stop. Uh, we need to remove this piece, the stop, before we can access this panel, the port, because as you'll see when you take it out, there's a little lip on it that keeps us in. So this needs to be removed so we can access the port, which contains the weight. This is one of my favorite tools. It's called a zipper tool. Uh, this is used when you're trying to remove a stop. 
Um, and a lot of times in these old houses, uh, these have been painted a billion times. Um, so to break the paint seal, we use these serrated edges on the zipper tool to break it up and then we'll be easily able to pull it out. Removing the stop is always a little tricky because uh, these guys are old and they're thin and they like to break. Um, if that happens, if they do break, don't panic. I'll give you a video and a solution for that as well. So now that we have our stop out, we wanna hang on to this guy because we're gonna put him back in. We're gonna reuse them, like almost all of the parts because they're all built to be reused or repaired. Uh, this guy came out in great shape, he was easy. We're gonna keep him and hang on to him. Now we got our little stubby flathead guy and we're gonna get into the port. We will even save the screw because you can just go right back in there. My little guy. It's the moment we've all been waiting for. Will there be a wait in here? Oh no! Oh. We've got to wait. He's a big one. All right, so we got our wait in here. As you can see, he's very big because this is a very big window. And now we gotta figure out a way to get him out. So we're really lucky that the weight is here. Uh, a lot of times, and this sounds very odd, the first thing I do when I open up a port and I said that there's not a weight in there is I go into the basement and I look to see if there's a weight down there. Because a lot of times when these chains break, the weights are so big and so heavy that they bust through the wall here and down into the basement. So. Always look there first. And if you can't find it in the basement, I'll put a link in the comment section um, that will show you where you can buy new weights. So this guy still has part of his chain intact. Uh, it just wasn't connected to the window. So we're able to lift the chain. And you can see how when you pull the chain, the weight goes up and down. We're also gonna use this leverage to help ease him out of his way here and sometimes it takes a lot of wiggling to get these guys out you'll be able to see just how big he is because it is a huge window it's a baby so we've got this giant weight we can see that he's still connected to his chain here so we're gonna snip that off pull that out and uh rechain him So you can see the chain is held together by a hook here. You just unhook that guy and put it right. So we just pull the rest of the chain right out from here. And this can be thrown away because we're going to replace it. All right, so now we're gonna get to the actual chaining process. Uh, this is a stainless steel uh, bronze tip chain. I think it's lovely and uh, it'll last forever. Uh, and it's uh, rated for the weight of the window. So there's different types and gauges of chain. This one is specific for a very large window, so that way it'll last another 150 years and not break. I'm gonna show you how to measure your chain appropriately. So I like to thread my chain through the pulley, flat end first. So you can see there's a taper on this end. I like to have that go in first. I just feel like it uh, makes it go up and down a little more smoothly. We feed it through the pulley up here. You can see there's a round wheel here. And because the weight of the chain is rather heavy, once we start feeding it through there, eventually it will come down through the port wall and we'll be able to grab it. Like that. So now we're ready to thread the chain into the weight. We're gonna use 
a little clip. Looks like this. There'll be a link in the comments on where to buy those. I'm gonna thread it like a giant sewing needle. Let me put the small end through this hole and the bigger end through that hole. And then we tighten it up. Now, come the tricky part. Get the weight back into the port. Now that the chain is cut, we take our spiral and we thread it through here. So right now it's just a placeholder because now we have to do all of this to the other side. There's been a lot of times where I threaded the chain through and I cut it instead of keeping on the spool. And then because of the weight of the chain, it just zipped right through and then I had to redo it. So I know we mentioned this before, but just always put like a little placeholder in there. Throw your spiral in there. It goes, fits perfectly there. And that way you don't have to worry about it getting sucked back up. And then you can just grab it from there. Now that we have it changed, we're gonna put our port wall back in. Pop them in here, pop them in there. Grab our screw. And there we go. Now that we have our port back in, we can put our little stop back in. This little guy in here, up here. Now you might see them using this piece of wood. It's just to protect from directly hammering onto this wood. So you don't make marks. And now that he's in his home, these full finishing nails, just three for this one, pop them back in there. Now that we have our port, our stop, our chain back on, we're going to go measure the sash so we can put in our spring bronze weather stripping on the side here. So this is spring bronze weather stripping. Uh, when you go to do your windows, you want to measure the width of your sash and find the appropriate width for your weather stripping. I'll send you a link to that in the comments section. Uh, the point of this is to seal the window against incoming breezes, wind, weather, etc. So once this is on, I'll show you, we'll score this edge, it'll make a flange, it'll press against the window and keep it nice and tight. In the meantime, what we want to do is measure the length of the window. So from bottom of the sash to the top of the sash is 51 and a half inches. We'll take our spring bronze and move that over to our opening and attach it with, you can either use penny nails, or you can use a staple gun, and I'll show you both. Okay, before we get into the weather strip, I want to talk about a couple things about it. It is a rascally little snake. It is uh, set to be tense. To, when you score it, it creates a tension. So it's just wants to wiggle around and get out of your fingers. And if I let go right now, it would go boing all over the floor and unravel everywhere and it's a mess. Also, Super important, this part right here is extremely sharp. Don't touch it, avoid it as, 
as much as you can. It will slice anything that it contacts, comes in contact with right open, including my little thingies a couple of times. So that's what you need to know before we get started. So now that we went over that, a little sneak down and measure on the side of the window. We determined that that was 51 and a half inches. So we're gonna start at the bottom of the stash. Above the wall, we go up. One and a half inches. Mark here. And that's where we'll put our spring guards to. So I've got my protective gloves on because of this guy. And when we put the spring bronze on, we want to be sure that we put it on facing the right direction. As you can see, there's a lip right here, and a little divot. We want to make sure that that is facing the interior so that when we score it, this will flange this way towards the window and stop any weather from getting in. So we unravel a bit. Go up to our mark. weather stripping uh, nails. We're going to tack as close to the top of the spring bronze as possible with one nail on this side and one nail on this side. This will be the only part of the spring bronze where you put two nails side by side. The rest of the way down is going to be along this line and not this edge until we get to the bottom where we'll do two more. Now that we have our spring bronze attached, we're gonna do my favorite part, which is score it. We're gonna take a painter's knife, and we're gonna run it just right along this edge. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you can see how it starts to draw the bronze out into a little flange. And do that all the way down. Now that we have the spring bronze on both sides, uh, it's time for the fun part. We put the sash back in and have a fully functioning window. Now that we have our chain through the pulley, we're gonna pop our sash back into the opening. Now this is a bottom sash, so that means that we want the weight to be all the way up off of the bottom of the port wall. So we want it up at the top of the port. What that does is counterbalance the weight of the window. So let's say this window is probably about 100 pounds. Each of those long weights that I showed you earlier are 50 pounds, so it perfectly balances the weight. So that means when we open the window, the weights will drop down, counterbalance the weight of the window, and keep it in place no matter where we want to position the window. To do that, we have our Now I'll already gone ahead and marked where my spiral goes, but you'll see on this channel over here, you want to pull down until you can't pull anymore. Give it a little bit of slack then. And that's about where you want your spiral to go in this hole. And then you screw it into the wood. Now you want to be really careful because if your screw is too long, it'll hit the glass and cause the glass to break. So you want to make sure that you know how long the divot is into the actual wood and make sure that your screw is not too long. Now that you have them changed, your spirals are in the divots, they're screwed in, everything's secure. Go ahead and give it a test. And now we're gonna put the interior stops back in. All right, now we're just gonna pop in our stops, put in a couple finishing nails. We're gonna make sure it's not too tight against the window so it's not hindering it from going up and down, but close enough that it won't wobble back and forth.
there we have it. Functioning window, new chains, new weather stripping, ready for the Pittsburgh winter.